Young Show. Hello. It's been said by those who know that emotion, whether it be good or bad, used properly and at the proper time, will inevitably produce good, because that's what it was intended to do. Tonight, we go to New Orleans to the Mardi Gras. Like Mardi Gras gets crazier every year. Well, they really are enjoying themselves down there. Did you see the pictures in the front page of today's paper? No, why? Uh, you've never seen such ridiculous costumes. Oh. Well, cannibals, Indians, men from Mars. Well, even the man and his wife are wearing costumes. Well, that's what Mardi Gras is for. To lose one's inhibitions and to have a good time. Well, speaking of losing inhibitions. Paul. Don't. Dr. Henry. There's a phone call for you. A Mrs. Ryder. Well, here we go. Josie? Yes, ma'am. After you bring me some more tea, you may go see Henry if you like. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Josie, I'd like to see your costume before you go. Yes, ma'am. I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave you for a while, Catherine. Oh, anything serious? No, I won't be gone long. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Just over on North Cleveland. Oh. Well, be careful. You know, it's nice to know you worry about me. <laughs> well, it could be very dangerous out there today. You know that as well as I do. Oh, I'll be all right. <laughs> Look, I've got an idea. What? Why don't you come with me? And then we'll go to the Prairie Beaches and Canal Street. Our whole crowd will be there. And I'd love to see you, Catherine. It's been a long time, over a year now. No, Paul. I'd rather stay here. Listen to me. No, I'm not going to listen to you. Please, don't start that again. Very well. Well, it's uh, 3 o'clock. I'll be back by 4. All right. Oh, and uh, worry some more about me. I like it. <laughs> well, look who's here. Good afternoon, Dr. Hammond. Good afternoon, Melody. Miss Catherine. How about here, honey? I came up to show you my costume. Oh, it's beautiful. Turn around. You like it? Oh, indeed I do. Well, you're the prettiest little Dutch girl I ever did see. <laughs> Yes, I know. I'll come back afterwards and show you all the things I catch off the floats. All, all right. right? All right. And Melanie, be careful of the stairs. Josie just polished them this morning. I will. See you later. All right. <laughs> Dr. Hammond is coming back very soon. Go on. You're sure now? Oh, go on. It's not fussing. Okay. Well, Queen should drink champagne. I, uh, I like tea. You friend of the Hamilton? Yes. I thought they were still in Atlanta. Well, I borrowed the key, so I could see the sights from the balcony here. I don't like crowds. <laughs> They're having a lot of fun down there. Why aren't you down there with them? Because I can see better from here. Besides, I don't like crowds either. Yes, with all those masks, you can't tell what or whom you're looking at. <laughs> But that's the general idea. What are you doing alone on a day like today, a beautiful woman like you? How do you know I'm beautiful? I'm wearing a mask, too. Yes, you could be ugly as sin behind that mask. What are you doing? I'm coming over. Oh, no, be careful, you'll pop Oh, 
<laughs> Your Majesty. You shouldn't have done that. Why, you could have killed yourself. Uh, there are easier ways of being killed than falling off the balcony. You could uh, step into the street and be hit by a car. Or you could fall and be trampled to death by the mob down there. Oh, it's happened. Or suppose someone had a knife. Now, you'd never know who did it with all those masks. Would you, Your Majesty? I suppose not. And now, sir, you may exit by my leave. I've been watching you for over an hour through the shutters. You look like a queen sitting there, surveying her royal subjects. Tell me, are you a good queen or a bad one? I believe you've had too much champagne. And I'd appreciate it if you'd go. Oh, I know this is Mardi Gras and everyone's supposed to be extra friendly today, but I'd rather be alone, if you don't mind. No, oh, but I do mind. And if I left, then I'd be alone. And I don't like being alone. I'm sure there must be dozens of beautiful girls down there who just love some champagne. Why don't you go and find them? See? Empty. Besides, I don't want to go down there. Look at them. Have you ever stopped to think what it's like behind those masks? This is the one day of the year they all wait for so they can hide from themselves. This is the day they excuse their sins and fool people behind a ten-cent mask. But you're wearing a mask. Maybe I'm trying to hide from myself, too. What are you hiding behind your mask? At the moment, sir, my impatience. I wish you'd go. I hate Mardi Gras. You're not from New Orleans, are you? No. Just visiting? That's right. Then I don't understand. I mean, why would you visit, visit New Orleans this time of the year when you say you hate Mardi Gras? Well, listen. There's a band coming. Shall we? Oh, no, no, thank you. I... But the Queen always has the first dance. Come. Oh, no, please! Oh. Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Um, now, would you please go? I'm tired. Please, excuse me, sir. A shame you're being a cripple. A beautiful woman like you. You may leave by the front door this time. I don't want you killing yourself by trying to jump the balconies again. Well, why worry about me being killed when we all die a little each now, day? Now, look here, whoever you are. I've asked you very nicely to leave. You're getting angry. No, I'm not. I don't like being angry. Then why don't you offer me some wine? After all, it's Mardi Gras. And didn't you say you're supposed to be extra friendly today? Yes, I did. If I do, then will you go? Perhaps. There, there's some sherry back there on the sideboard. They say Mardi Gras is a day of magic. Black magic, they mean. I beg your pardon? Once a long time ago, I met another woman on Mardi Gras. She was dressed as... Like you. Your costume is exactly what she was wearing. Where did you get it? How rent is it? You even look like her. Of course. That's what made me notice you out on the balcony. You look like Laura sitting there. Like the first time I saw her. On the night of the ball. The orchestra was playing the coronation march and the procession came up the aisle and everyone was looking at Laura. She was the queen. She was the most beautiful woman I had ever seen. Even through her mask, I could tell that. But it was her face, her beautiful face, that was the real mask. The mask that hid all the filth and ugliness that was really Laura. You finished your drink? Take off your mask. No. Is that 
you go if I gave you a drink? Let me see what you really look like. No, please. I... Yes. You even look more like her without the mask. Now I'm asking you for the last time. Will you please go? You're getting angry again. No. The parade will be passing by in a few minutes. I can hear the drums. It'll be getting chilly out in the balcony in a few minutes. I wonder if you'll be kind enough to get me a shawl from our closet in the bedroom. It's the middle door there. But she'll be right back, I'm sure. Oh! oh I'm so sorry. You must have accidentally kicked the wheel of your chair. You know, you shouldn't come out here. If you fell down those steep stairs, you could be killed. Uh, uh, I wonder if you do me a favor. With, with all the noise and excitement, I'm afraid I'm getting an awful headache. And I, and I just know I'm out of aspirin. Would you be kind enough to go down to the drugstore and get me some? Well, he's only two blocks away, and, and you could be back here in time to see the parade from here with me. All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'd better lock the door. If you're here alone, some fool might wander in while I'm gone. Make your headache worse. You can see well enough from here.
they're throwing prizes from the float. Maybe if we were out in the balcony, we could catch something. Well, those trinkets are just as false as everything else. What a beautiful painting you'd make. If only you... If only what? Beauty should be a perfect thing. Pure and uncontaminated by anything sick or evil. I had a dog once. Magnificent animal. Her coat was soft and beautiful as a woman's hair. One day she tried to get out and got caught under the fence and a nail tore her skin. Left a four-inch scar on that soft, beautiful coat. I had to destroy her. Just because... I don't like imperfect things. I thought Laura's beauty was perfect. I tried to paint her many times. There's always something about her I could never quite capture or put on canvas. It wasn't until after I was married to her that I discovered what it was. She was a tramp. A beautiful tramp. A white-head sepulcher. Oh. You're an artist, then, a painter. Yes. They said I was the most sensitive artist since Van Gogh. That was before Laura. Oh, I see. Uh, where is Laura now? In hell. My headache's all gone now. Couldn't we please go out in the balcony and see the rest of the parade from there? How did you become a cripple? Uh, I'd rather not talk about it, if you don't mind. No, tell me, why? I just don't, that's all. Why? Tell me. It was an accident. What kind of an accident? An auto accident. Oh, when? Almost a year ago. My husband and I were coming home from the country. I was driving the car and it was pouring down rain. I was driving too fast. Oh. Anyway, we... We just went over the levee. Your husband? What happened to him? Uh, uh, he was killed. Instantly. Oh. Your legs, were they, were they crushed? No. Cut up? No. Well, what happened to them? They really don't know what's wrong with them. Anyway, they're paralyzed, and I just don't want to talk about it anymore. It's really tragic. A beautiful woman like you, marred by a deformity. <laughs> I just remembered. I'm not wearing my mask anymore. Oh, you still have yours on. Uh, you're quite handsome. Am I? Yes. That's what Laura said the first time we met. You are so much like her. Same shaped face, sensitive eyes. What a magnificent portrait I could paint of you. No. Your legs. Those dead legs would make it a flaunt, a sickening deceit. I'd love to have my portrait painted by you. No, I couldn't. Couldn't you just forget about my legs? That's what she asked me. Couldn't you just forget what I was and think of me only now as I am, your wife? Oh, I tried to forget. But it ate into my brain like acid. Every time I looked at her, I couldn't see her beauty. No, only the filth underneath. And when I tried to paint her, I found myself creating nightmares in green with livid streaks of purple and lascivious globs of dark brown. It was horrible. The King's Road will be passing pretty soon. Couldn't we please go out in the balcony and see it from there? Please, couldn't we? All right. Oh, you're wrapped. Oh, no, I don't need it. I won't need the rest. No, it's not true. I'm not crazy. They don't understand. That old man was blind. 
I had to do it. Deformity must be destroyed. My father taught me that, and he was a great artist, a great genius. They thought he was insane because they didn't understand. You understand, don't you? Yes, I do. Don't you see? It's not right you're being like this, a cripple. It's wrong. It's all wrong. Come in! Catherine? Melody. Look, Miss Catherine. Look at all the things I call. Look. Honey, you go on and get out of here. I just came ashore with a gun like I said I would. Oh, and look, a real lantern with a mask on it. And it works, too. See it burning? Here, hold it. Yes, honey. Isn't it pretty? Oh, it's very pretty. The parade isn't over yet, darling. Why don't you go on down and, and, and watch the king's float coming by? Huh? Oh, all right. See you later. Little girl. Your foot. What's wrong with your foot? Come here. Melanie, don't. No, don't, Melanie. Stay away from her! Catherine, uh, you're standing up. Look, Miss Catherine, you're on your feet. So, you tried to deceive me too, just like Laura. Deceit is worse than deformity. Why did you trick me, Laura? Why didn't you tell me what you really are? You deceived me, Laura. You hid your filth behind your beautiful face. I'm not Laura. I'm Catherine. My name is Catherine. You hurt me, Laura. You hurt me. Stay where you are. Stay where you are! You really want. I tried to tell you for over a year now. There's nothing wrong with you. You're all right now, Catherine. It's all over. Hold me, hold me. It is very often true that fear is the father of courage and the mother of safety. Well, good night. And we'll see you next week. Be sure to be with us next week, same time, same station. <laughs>